Hello my dear friends, you're in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 23rd of March of 2024. There we have lots of tragic events, so let's start. Let's discuss once again the situation in Moscow. I remind you that yesterday on the 22nd of March, the terrorists attacked the Krokus city hall, this one. And as a result of that attack, uh, there were lots of casualties among civilians. According to official data, uh, the latest official data, up to 150 victims among civilians, including kicked. And of course, this is a very big tragedy for tragic event for Russia. And uh, uh, after after the situation in Krokus City Hall ended, the Russian special forces started hunting for the terrorists. And uh, by before we start making the video, before I start making the video, according to official Russia, Russian, Russian data, the special forces of Russian Federation managed to capture every single terrorist in the area. And according to official report, the terrorists were heading towards the border with Ukraine. And according to statement of the head of Russian special forces, uh, those terrorists, uh, they captured 11 terrorists and uh, during the day and uh, four, they also they managed to capture four of the terrorists who were involved uh, in, uh, let's say, including all four terrorists who were directly involved in the terrorist attack on the Krokus. And uh, according to him, the Ukrainians were directing, were heading towards Ukraine. And according to him, there were soldiers or some, let's say, resources, some sources uh, on the territory of Ukraine who were expecting those terrorists and who were able and who wanted, who could provide them a safe road and safe passage on the territory of Ukraine. Uh, very likely that this situation will be used as the main evidence that Ukraine has a strict connection to that terrorist attack. For now, there is an investigation. Currently, we don't have official data from the Russians and from the Russian investigator that this attack and this terrorist attack was prepared and conducted by the Ukrainian special forces. For now, we don't have this update. But very likely tomorrow or the day after, we're going to receive 100% confirmation who was responsible for that attack. Just a few words about this attack and we will move further. When talking about that terrorist attack, and uh, I believe you've seen lots of geolocations, lots of video from the Krokus City Hall, you probably mentioned that the terrorists were acting more or less professional. The terrorists knew for sure when exactly it's better to arrive uh, in the area of this uh, Krokus City Hall. They arrived in the evening of Friday when most of the people, when the most of the people from Moscow were going from Moscow to their homes, to their relatives, to their friends for a very long weekend. So that's why there was a very big traffic on the roads and according to information from the ground, the Russian police forces were moving towards Kor Krokus City Hall around an hour and a half and mainly because of the traffic and big movement on the roads. So one hour and a half, the terrorists have a free time to do, to do whatever they like. Also, we I mentioned that the terrorists start acting at the beginning. There were no like attempts first to enter the building. So the main goal um, of the terrorists was to get uh, to this hall exactly to this area where there was significant number of civilians and the main purpose of them was to set this uh, part this building on fire because uh, the terrorists understand understood that with bullets with rifles maybe they can let's say destroy a lot of people uh, to deal a lot of damage but they can't make massive let's say attack massive let's say losses among civilians and so that's what they understand that the best way to do this is to set the this building on fire and now we according to official data from the Russian sources we know that there were around 150 victims as a result of that attack but we still don't have the numbers how many of those 150 um, uh, let's say victims how many victims uh, let's say appeared as a result of bullets and as a result of rifle attack of the terrorist and how many how many of them appeared as a result of fire and as I understand I don't have the exact numbers but according to reports we received during the day and so one, uh, I believe that the ratio is around, let's say, um, seventy percent to thirty percent. Seventy percent the victims as a result of fire, and just thirty as a result of terrorist attack. And the main reason, the main, let's say, base I used to make these conclusions is that by the end of the evening, yesterday, by the end of the evening, the sources reported about the losses of forty, and now we have the loss about one hundred and fifty, um, and the, this uh, level of losses because now the uh, some um, some services, um, let's say. Um, 
and start let's say breaking these ruins start let's say clearing the area and they continue finding more and more bodies uh in the different places of the crocus city hall so we see that they had a certain plan it wasn't uh, the uh, side the nationality of people who were involved in that attack were tajikistan from tajikistan it's a middle asia country and uh, uh, they don't know russian well they know russian but not so good they were talking not so good in russian language and uh, and uh, but the plan they prepared the plan they prepared was very very well prepared they know for sure once again when to come where to go how to start when to start and what to do in the final uh, part to set the building on fire and uh, um but there were few things a few mistakes uh, the attackers made during that attack the first mistake they made is that they were using the same car when they entered the area this is the car they were using this is the white renault they were using this car and they were using the same car when they left uh, the crocus city hall furthermore and this for example uh, the uh, photo of how they were leaving the territory on the same car and that was their biggest mistake because uh, after they left uh, Moscow after they left the Krokos city hall they basically bypassed um, so the first terrorist uh, we have geolocation the first terrorist where geolocation where the terrorist was captured is the area in the vicinity of Bryansk this is the video where the terrorist was captured so if we calculate the distance uh, from the Krokos city hall and and uh, let's say uh, and the area where the first terrorist was captured we will see that the distance is very big and the terrorist didn't during all this road during all this trip they haven't changed the car and this is the first sign that either the terrorists were completely unprofessional and they were following uh, just the orders they received from some sponsors or some people or curators or instructors who so more around 385 kilometers they were uh, driving using the same old car almost through the entire western part of russian federation and the second biggest mistake the terrorists made is that they decided to stick together so all four terrorists uh, stayed in the same car and they were moving toward the border so uh, that means that uh, those terrorists didn't understand what's what they're doing they just received some uh, let's say steps of the plan and they were following so to attack at this time to do this to go to this building to go to this apartment to set the building on fire then to sit all together together in one car why the same car that you came to the area and to start movements toward the ukrainian border and because if the plan was prepared by them and if they were involved in this operation by themselves of course after the attack in the crocus they would not use the same car probably they would split their team into at least four teams and everyone would operate by himself one would go in direction of ukrainian border another one would start movements let's say uh, towards the border with belarus and then from belarus probably somewhere to the baltic states or to ukraine as well through poland one of them could stay in in moscow and another one could start movements towards kazakhstan and let's say asia countries but they decided to use one car and that was their second biggest mistake so that means uh, all this uh, the first part was made it's of course it's a tragic event and I condemn this violence, but when talking about just the implementation of operation from the science perspective, let's call it like, the, like this, we can say that the first part of operation was conducted professional from their side. So they got a certain instructions and they made everything according to instructions. But the second part, the abandoning of the area, it was like, uh, it's like, it seems that somebody set them up it was like somebody wanted them to stick all together so it would be much more easier to capture them and they were sent towards the border with ukraine so something is wrong with the second part uh, or there is another explanation that the terrorists basically after they uh, realized what they uh, made in the Krokos city hall they were so afraid of and shocked so that's why they decided to just to stick together and to run as far as possible where they can see so where their eyes were watching in that in these directions they were moving so anything could happen but anyway the operation has ended the terrorists were captured now the terrorists were transferred to moscow to the territory to investigators uh, they will be asked for some questions obviously the investigators will find those who were let's say uh, the those who ordered that operation and uh, also they will find uh, let's say allies 
uh, who helped them to uh, conduct this operation. And after that, Vladimir Putin will make uh, his statement. And probably this is going to be very uh, important and very powerful statement by the president of Russian Federation. Today, Putin made, uh, made some statement about the situation. Uh, he reported that dozens of peaceful, innocent people were victims of the terrorist attack in Krokus. Putin thanked to, uh, the rescue workers, uh, firefighters and um, rescuers who did everything to save lives. Putin expressed condolences to everyone who lost family and friends and he declared March 24 a day of national mourning. So, a uh, very important statement to unite the nation, to unite Russia and to move further the next day. Now let's move to the situation on the ground. We have lots of very interesting updates as well. And the most important updates are coming from the village by the name of Ivanovskaya. Today the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that the Russians, as a result of very heavy clashes, as a result of a very powerful attack, managed to establish complete control over the village of Krasnaya, or in Ukrainian language it sounds like Ivanovskaya, and uh, to force the Ukrainians to fall back. So we have changed the color of the area, showing the stereotype on the complete Russian control. And I'll remind you that just yesterday we discussed that the Russians, as a result of offensive operation, managed to establish control over this hill, the most important hill that Ukrainians used to use to control the situation in Ivanovska and the hill that was the main headache for the Russians. But uh, And if you remember my words, we discussed that but bef because of the fact that the Russians captured the hill, we can start counting even maybe minutes of Ivanovska until the complete collapse and complete fall. And today the Ministry of Defense uh, confirmed our words and now the Russians can have this control over the territory. For now, we don't know for sure whether the Russians managed to move further and to enter the forest that located to the west of Ivanovska or they stopped on the, let's say, border of the village and now uh, they're doing some kind of regrouping before further offensive operation to the Tseversky Donetsk Donbass Canal. Uh, from the other side, uh, we haven't received any reports from the Ukrainian side. Very likely they don't know for sure what to do next because the situation now is critical. Obviously, during the next few days, the Ukrainians will do one thing uh, for sure, to counterattack the Russians on the hill. Because it's not just the hill, it's the only hill the Russians managed to enter. Because either Ivanovska, either Ivanovska Popovo Forest, Bogdanovka, the railways, all these territories, Klishevka, so on, are located in the lowland. And this hill is the only hill of Chasavyar hill. So the Russians gained a foothold on the hill. And of course, it's a vital question for the Ukrainians to force the Russians to fall back, fall back even if the Russians captured Ivanovska. So that's why I expect during the next few days the Russians will try to stabilize the area to improve their foothold around the hill and to force the Ukrainians to fall back further inside of the western part of the forest to Chasavyar itself and so on. And so I, I assume that very likely during the next few days the Russians will try to establish control over something like this. This is the vital question for them for further offensive operation in direction of uh, the Chasavyar town and further to the west, uh, let's say, in direction of Slavens, Kramatorsk and Konstantinovka. From the, from the other side, we understand now that Ukrainian positions in Klishchevka are very weak. They need, them, they need now to make a choice, either to stay there and to wait, uh, let's say, until the Ukrainians lose completely their resources and reserves and then to fall back or to start the withdrawing process right now. When talking about the Ukraine command, of course, they will try to hold this area as long as possible, just on purpose to save the time, to save, to win some time, to win some time and to prepare, uh, this, let's say, the next defense belt on the Ukrainian side of Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal. So this is going to be the next, obviously, defense belt in the area. And uh, the Ukrainians will fall back. For now, I can't tell you for sure when exactly this is going to happen, but probably in a week or even in a two, everything will be resolved in this direction in Russian favor. And I'll remind you that just a few days ago we received a report from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation that they managed to establish control over the railway station Alibastrova and now the Russians are about to start the assault and storm operation of Klishevka at least from three directions. Uh, the first direction is the original direction along the main streets like this one and a few more directions, uh, one um, of direction from the south, this is it, and the second direction of Russian attack might be from the 215.7 hill. So the question of, there is no more question about Klishevka, just a matter of time. And um, also, for now, we don't have and we don't know for sure what the Russians are planning to do with Bogdanovka, Kalinovka and Grigorovka. 
But as I understand, until at least the Russians resolve the issue and the problems with the southern part, I don't think that the Russians are going to make any activities on the northern direction. So probably one or two weeks, there are going to be operational pause. During this time, the Russians will resolve this issue and then they will move further to the north. Now we are moving to Sivir's direction and we have additional updates from Bilogorovka. Probably the 6th or 7th day in a row, the Russians continue storming and attacking the Ukraine positions on the landfill. Now, after a few days of clashes, during the previous days, after a few ways um, attempts to assault the area with significant number of armored vehicles, I remind you that most of those attacks were repelled by the Ukrainians, the Russians managed to discover the Ukrainian positions, artillery positions, machine gun positions, anti-tank positions, and the previous 24 hours they were clearing this area with FPV drone strikes. After the Russians clear the territory from uh, discovered Ukraine positions, they're gonna make another attack with another significant number of armored vehicles and they will attack once again from the south. A little bit to the west, also during the previous attacks, the Russians discovered Ukraine artillery positions in the fields between Seversk and Belagorovka, and also during the previous days, the Russians were destroying the Ukraine positions just to clear the area and to ease the further Russian progress and movements. I'm not saying that uh, during the next attack the Russians will, let's say, change the entire situation in their favor. Maybe the Russians still need additional two, three more attacks in the direction of the landfill uh, that will be obviously repelled by the Ukrainians. But on the fourth or on the fifth attack, the area will, uh, will fall and the Russians will break through. The question is whether the Russians have enough of reinforcements and reserves on this direction, because every single attack always means significant losses, at least among the material part, among the assets. And the question whether the Russians have enough of assets to uh, conduct additional 3-4 attacks until they discover every single Ukrainian position and until they, they suppress every single Ukrainian, uh, let's say, anti-tank position, uh, let's say, checkpoint, every single stronghold and so on. We haven't received anything from the South Kupins direction as well as we haven't received anything from the North Kupins direction. On the borderlands, uh, today the Ministry of Defense uh, of Russian Federation removed the Belgorod front line from the Ministry of Defense report, which confirms and means a few things. First of all, the Russians are not planning to use Belgorod direction as a separate direction. They created the Belgorod direction just to handle with Ukrainian counter attacks on the Russian territory. After the Russians repelled and defeat the Ukrainians, they decided to remove the front line as well. And uh, furthermore, we, today we got uh, another video of uh, uh, Russian hunting uh, on uh, the Ukrainian vampires, another vampire was destroyed. Um, also, when talking about the borderlands, we continue receiving updates and photos and videos of uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, tracks, uh, let's say freezing tracks, refugees tracks, uh, that uh, Ukrainians used to evacuate uh, their losses. So a lot of trucks were on the border and a lot of, uh, let's say, Ukrainian soldiers were evacuated to the final, let's say, to their final trip. A lot of interesting details continue coming from Kharkiv. If you remember, during the previous days, the Russians conducted a significant number of strikes um, uh, on Ukrainian energy facilities. A lot of power pla plants were damaged or even destroyed. And according to information we have, the Ukrainians still haven't managed to restore a power supply in Kharkov and very likely they're not going to be able to do this during the uh, this weekend and this is a very bad piece of news the Russians realized that they managed to deal the critical let's say damage and now it's up to the Russians to decide to turn Kharkiv off completely because as I understand the next if the Russians may few more attacks two more attacks there are very high chances that they will cut uh, Kharkiv completely from electricity uh, not like for a week or day, for years, for months, until, let's say, the Russians answer Kharkiv and capture this town, and then they will restore everything and repair everything. Currently, no, for sure, but maybe this, let's say, blackout operation from the Russian side is the part of possible further offensive operation in the direction, because there is no logic explanation why are you cutting off the capital of the region Kharkiv from electricity if you are not going to attack, let's say, within the next uh, few weeks or days or something like this, because if you are not going, then the Ukrainians will restore and everything will be as usual. They will attack once again, they will restore it again, and so on and so on. It, it can be like endless process. The only reason, let's say, smart reason is to start attack immediately after the uh, complete turn off from the electricity. 
Now we are moving to Avdeevka direction. The Russians continue offensive operation on the line Toninka, Arlovka and Berdychi. Today we have additional updates from the Ukrainian side. The Ukrainians were FPV droning the Russian personnel carriers, light vehicles, light trucks with FPV drones. All those strikes took place in this area. The videos were geolocated. So that's why we have a right and we can change the color of map and we will do this and we will color this entire area under Russian control. So the Russians are getting closer and closer to the river. Uh, to Semenovka from the east, to Semenovka uh, from the south through, uh, through Arlovka and the Russians are getting the same village from Berdychi. So very likely the next few days and the Russians will capture the fields and then the battle for Semenovka will start. Today the Russians have already launched the FPV drone strikes against the Ukrainian forces in the fields. On this video, for example, we can see abandoned or maybe not abandoned, but something like something armored that was attacked by the Russians. Furthermore, some Russian sources reported that uh, today the Russians conducted the first attempt to attack Semyonovka from the south along this line and the second attack um, was made by the Russians from the north. So currently, according to some reliable sources, there are very heavy clashes for Semyonovka and maybe uh, by the time you're going to watch the video, uh, the Semyonovka will be already under Russian control. So for now, it's it's still there are still very heavy clashes but who knows what is going to be uh, during the next few hours Furthermore, the sources reported and the pro-Ukrainian sources confirm additional Russian progress to the west. More and more fields without almost any resistance from the Ukrainian side were captured by the Russians. So I assume that the next thing the Russians are going to do is to clear completely the fields between Toninka, Vadyana, Sporne. All these fields will be captured, including the strongholds in this area. The Russians currently uh, reach the operational space. It's very difficult for the Ukrainians to slow down the Russians. The only line, as we discussed in the previous video, the Ukrainians can more or less slow down the Russians is this line and uh, so there are still like few hundred meters from any directions to get this area and after that maybe it will take another week or two until the Russians will bypass the territory. Now we are moving to the south uh, Donetsk direction to Novomikhailovka. Uh, we have lots of geolocations from the area, which confirms that the Russians launched another wave of attack. And as you can see, based on the geolocations and the configuration of geolocations, we see that most of the strikes took place exactly in the west, in the central part, say in the western central part and the western part of Novomikhailovka itself. On this video, we can see the group of Ukrainians who were uh, leaving from Novomikhailovka towards Paraskoyevka and Konstantinovka, maybe evacuation group. And they were attacked by the Russian FPV. Maybe those were the soldiers who abandoned their positions and the Russians just were hunting them and trying to get them. On this video we can see almost the same thing. On this video we can see another Ukrainian armored vehicle, very likely, who was moving. Uh, no, another group of Ukrainian soldiers who also was moving and heading towards uh, from to the north. So from the south to the north, very likely the Ukrainians were moving also in direction of Konstantinovka. So the Ukrainians were moving something like this and they were attacked, they were planning to move something like this and they were attacked by FPV drone here. On the previous video we saw the Ukraine movements uh, something like this. Also another team that was moving further to the west and they were attacked in this area. So both videos confirms that Ukrainians either abandoning their positions or maybe they have already uh, retreat from Novomikhailovka and maybe tomorrow we're going to receive more updates and details, maybe even updates about complete control over the village and the battle for Paraskoyevka and Konstantinovka is going to start very likely like tomorrow. So the situation dev start developing here, uh, so we're waiting for more updates. We haven't received anything from Uglidar direction, a few more updates from Staromayorska. The Russians continue bombing the towns of Staromayorska and Urajaina with a significant number of FAPs, artillery. Yesterday we discussed that the Russians captured the buildings that today we got geolocations the Russians were bombing. Maybe these strikes were before the Russian offensive, very likely that this is like this. And uh, today, we, as we discussed in the previous video, the Russians very likely captured the first streets in um, Staromayorska, for now we don't have geolocated proofs, but we are, will keep this information in our minds. Robotina, no changes on the ground, no activities, no clashes, just FPV drone strikes and that's it. And the same story about uh, Kherson direction, no activity, no changes on the ground, just strikes. The Russians were attacking the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians were attacking the Russians, nothing special. Today we got additional details and additional reports from Zaporozhye, once again from the uh, Dnipro power, hydroelectric power plant. On this video, for example, we can see uh, this video was made uh, today. On this video, we 
we can see the Ukrainian uh, cars driving through the dam. We see the, that the dam was damaged, that uh, there is uh, no, let's say, 100% possibilities to use this dam for traffic. And now you need to be very careful for further movement. So the dam was really damaged. And from now on, the Ukrainians can use the dam just as the logistic road. And that's it. They can't use it, let's say, for the production of electricity. So we'll see what is going to be next with the area where the Russians are going to make additional damage to this dam or not. Uh, for now, they uh, today there were no strikes, as you can see. But let's wait for tomorrow morning and this upcoming midnight. Very likely the Russians will repeat addition, more strikes on the territory of Ukraine. And that's it for today. Military Summary Channel reminds you condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.